My name is Sherry Hahn and we're at the Melton Adventist Church. I work at the Washington State Penitentiary that has a large prison ministry. Some of these people have never heard of Jesus. Hi, I'm Arline Finkbeiner. I've been working with the inmates at the prison, Washington State Penitentiary, for 35 years. Arlene does play a great piano. The inmates really seem to jam right along with her. And sometimes we even touch the lives of the guards. I'm Doug Bashir. I found out the Department of Correction was not the highest source of power. I found Jesus. The Adventist group has done more baptisms than any other group up there. In the last four years, 88 men have been baptized. My wife and I were baptized June of this year. That was the best thing I've ever gotten out of a penitentiary. I'm Walt Stevens and I just re I retired from prison in 2006 and I honor and the people that go down there. We have uh, Bible studies in five areas of the prison every week. Monday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, Friday evening. And on Sabbath we have five services, just like a church service, with the uh, Sabbath school lesson and a sermon and hopefully some special music. I believe there is people in prison that are, that are wanting to change. They're in a really bad spot to change because there's a lot of pressure on them from inside the prison. And our ministry has grown till we have now about 60 volunteers that come, most of them, at least once a month. When they ask me, I tell them, you know, the first thing you need to do is ask the Lord to come into your life. And the second thing you need to do is decide whether you're going to believe Him or not. And if you decide to believe Him, <laughs> then the Bible doesn't become a book of excuses. It becomes a book of truth. You just better get a hold of something and hang on, because He's going to prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that He's real. I met Tom Knopf. He was a officer at the prison. I get to talk with the Adventist ministry people while they're there talking with the inmates. And one Friday, Tom pulled us aside and he said, guys, would you pray that I could get a different job, different time, so I didn't have to work on Saturdays. And if I get that, I'm going to come to church. So the inmates, the volunteers, got together that Friday night. We prayed for a couple Friday nights for Tom. And it was sh very shortly after that, two or three weeks, that Tom showed up at the Village Church happy and excited because he got a different job. The prison ministry program doesn't just touch the lives of inmates, it'll touch the lives of anybody that gives them a chance and, and listen to them just for a minute. Good Lord, I put upon my heart, I guess, to, to ask him to come into my life. Walt um, had a problem with his cussing after working at the penitentiary for 27 years. and. Every other word that he said was a cuss word. All of a sudden realized that I'd quit cussing. And at that particular time, he gave me the urge to read the Bible. I started reading the New Testament. And then within a few days after that, he, he put his arms around me in the kitchen and showed me a little bit of heaven. And I mean, it was just the most wonderful thing you could ever imagine. It was, it was so much peace and tranquility and it was just absolutely beyond anything that could ever happen here on this earth. So in 2013, when my oldest boy passed away, we was coming back from church in Athena, and I just, well, I'll tell you what, I went through four days of pure misery. I just couldn't sleep at night or nothing. And finally, I decided, you know what? I got in the living room and I got down on my knees and I put my head in my arms and I said, Jesus, you promised to comfort me in my time of need. Two seconds later and the voice came back and told me, go on Wesley's Facebook. And I kind of thought like I was like Jonah. I was going to get on the boat going the other way because I did not want to get in there. I did not want to go on his Facebook because Wesley had been a drunk all of his life and, you know, and he didn't run around and did all the... He wasn't a bad kid, he just drank too much. I went in there on Wesley's Facebook and I found everything about Jesus. So apparently he'd either found him or was looking for him. So, you know, that makes a big difference in your life because it went from, <coughs> excuse me, but not ever seeing your son again to knowing that you'd be holding hands going to heaven. So, you know, and it's just, it just goes on like that. The Lord will do whatever 
it takes. Please support Prison Ministries. It helps not only the lives of the inmates, but the lives of those serving the inmates.